So the evolution of prognostic scores in follicular lymphoma it have been in the making for, for many, many years. There are no, uh, several prognostic factors that we use. One of them is the FLIPI, which was published many years ago now. And that was a retrospective overview of many patients diagnosed with follicular lymphoma with an overall survival endpoint. And that characterized survival based on the number of factors that patients had. And that's one parameter that we use for prognostication in follicular lymphoma. It groups patients into high, low, intermediate risk, high risk. Um, and then the other one that we use is the FLIPI2, which incorporates other factors, as well as beta-2 microglobulin and bone marrow involvement and bulk disease in order to prognosticate patients on the basis of progression-free survival. So those are two very well-known, well-established prognostic markers that we use. However, they don't necessarily help to guide treatment of patients. They just help you to understand how they'll do in the future with the treatment that they receive. IHC is really something that we use to help understand what's on the surface of the lymphoma cell. So follicular lymphoma, when you look at it under the microscope, is characterized by certain expression of certain proteins, and that includes CD10, CD20, BCL2. So it's a way for us to identify the cell, but it's not really used in terms of prognostication. FLIPI is the most used prognostic score because it has all of the things that we test on patients, hemoglobin and stage and age, but patients that have, if you use a FLIPI2, you have to order additional testing that's not always widely available. So I think in standard of care, if you're in Europe, you may use FLIPI2 more often, but if you're in the United States, you're more likely to use FLIPI. There's a third prognostic factor that's being looked at in terms of research, which is called the M7 FLIPI. And that one is also it was developed with, it was a multi-center study that developed this retrospective prognostic score using mutational status of several different genes in combination with performance status and with, um, with FLIPI score. But again, that's really used for research purposes and it's not part of our standard practice for widespread application. So as I was saying that in general, follicular lymphoma outcomes are very good. And most patients can live for almost 20 years with, with and some of them can go very long periods of time without needing any treatment. Uh, however, there is a lot of variability within that overall variable prognosis so that patients can sometimes have early disease recurrence, some of them undergo transformation, some of them are refractory to their treatment and that puts them in a less favorable category. But generally speaking, most patients will do quite well with, with this disease. In terms of risk assessment, um, we assess risk using some of the prognostic factors that we talked about, FLIPI, FLIPI2, but sometimes you don't have all of that information at hand when you're seeing a patient or if it's a referral, and you risk assess on the, on, on the basis of the patient's performance status, their, the, if, they're, if they're newly diagnosed, their comorbidities, whether or not they can tolerate certain treatments. If they're relapsed, then you want to determine the time that has elapsed from their first diagnosis to when they had recurrent disease. So all of those things go into your assessment of risk when you're, when you're seeing the patient for the first time. At this time, there is not um, a single prognostic factor which would identify those high-risk patients who progress within 24 months of diagnosis or initial therapy. However, several uh, uh, different factors have been identified in studies. And that typically uh, includes more advanced stage disease. So high and higher in arbor stage, higher uh, FLIPI score, high LDH, high beta-2 microglobulin. The latter two essentially um, identify more proliferative disease. So sicker patients uh, with also um, uh, um, higher performance status uh, by ECOG, meaning that uh, patients who are in uh, not such good shape are uh, possibly because of more proliferative disease with more involvement of uh, different organs. And then there are some uh, biologic prognos prognostic factors. Uh, factors. For example, um, uh, M7 FLIPI um, has been identified as predictive of early progression, as well as the new 23 gene score. However, those have not uh, necessarily been found um, um, in uh, uh, widespread use in clinical practice. So it's still work in progress. Comorbidities have been shown to predict outcomes in uh, many lymphomas, and that's certainly intuitive. Um, it's difficult to conduct a compre comprehensive assessment of comorbidities in everyday clinical practice. There is one parameter which we have been use using in studies called cumulative illness risk scale. That includes uh, 14 organ systems which need to be comprehensively evaluated. So as you can imagine, that's pretty difficult to do in everyday practice. So some simpler tests, such as stack test, uh, timed up and go, 
um, uh, when we ask the patient to get up from a chair and uh, walk essentially uh, 10 feet. And depending on how fast or slow they can do that, that you know, can help you predict uh, how they will do, what their performance status is, what their comorbidities are. Uh, but typically, you would essentially um, go through patients' comorbidities um, uh, one by one um, and determine what kind of an impact they would have on uh, uh, your therapy choice and outcomes. The predictive value of PET-CT uh, still remains somewhat investigational. There are uh, certain publications out there which indicate uh, that uh, so-called uh, total metabolic tumor volume is predictive of outcomes, progression-free survival. It's particularly predictive when uh, this TMTV value is combined with FLEP2 score, and then you can really separate patients into three different groups uh, with uh, high, uh, intermediate, and low risk. However, this still has not um, uh, uh, found widespread use in clinical practice because of certain technical uh, requirements that, um, that are there to conduct this assessment.